Today, we're taking a look at my first and probably only dive watch, the Oris Aquas Sun Wukong or Monkey King limited edition. Please do like, subscribe, comment, etc. to help the channel grow so I can make more videos about watches, pens, tech, and other hobbies and interests and share with you. In this video, we will take a look at the watch itself first um, and uh, review it. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about the Swiss watchmaker Oris. And then uh, lastly, the fascinating background on one of the most popular characters in Asian literature and culture, Sun Wukong and the Monkey King, and a little bit about Journey to the West, which is the novel that he is featured in. The watch comes with this special box with the 1960 Shanghai Animation Studio Sun Wukong face with the backdrop of his spinning magical staff. And then the logo for the collaboration is on the lower half of the box right here. You also get this trifle with a little version of Sun Wukong's magical staff. This is the title of the movie, Da Nao Tian Gong, or Big Trouble or Havoc in Heavenly Palace, which is the Monkey King's origin story. On the inside, it says that the Sun Wukong movie, The Monkey King Uproar in Heaven, is inspired by Journey to the West, both in English and Chinese. And here's the watch. It is quite large, especially for my six and a quarter inch wrist. It is 41 and a half millimeter across, 44 and a half millimeters including the crown. Lug to lug, it's almost 48 millimeters and almost 13 millimeters thick as well. And uh, here it is compared to my trusty Casio A168. You can see that the watch is purposeful, robust, has a pretty stout shape and build and just feels very, very sturdy. On the dial, you see the spinning magic staff motif with the blue background and the magic staff also serves as the second hand and recall some of the actions in the movie. The hands are also loomed um, as with the hour markers as well. Printed on the dial is the Oris logo on top and then Aquas pressure resistant 30 bar or 300 meters right above the date window and then Swiss made below that. On the inside, the movement is in automatic or 733, which is actually a modified Salita SW200-1, which itself is a ETA2824 clone, which means that it is a proven design with a very long track record. Oris uses the special or elaborate grade, which is just above the standard grade and below both the premium and cost chronometer grades, which means that it is adjusted to three positions and averaging plus minus seven seconds per day. It ticks at four hertz or eight ticks per second and has a power reserve of 38 hours. And you can also unscrew the crown and wind it manually as well if you want. The blue unidirectional die bezel is serrated on the edges for better grip and have minute markers from zero to 15 minutes. And then in five minute increments with 10 minutes indicated with Arabic numerals. The clicks are pretty satisfying as you can hear. And on the crown side here, you can see Oris on the screw down crown itself. And then the crown guards also have screws in there as well. Uh, alongside with the lugs very much adds to the industrial design a very purposeful look of a dive watch on the back you can see Sun Wukong's face again very much like the box cover and on the inner track Sun Wukong limited edition out of 2000 and on the outer edge it says stainless steel or swiss sapphire crystal and then 30 bar slash 300 meters the bracelet is of course solid and sturdy with twin pushers, three micro adjustments on the latch and a dive extension. You can see the outside of the latch has the Oris logo and it's where it gets scuffed the most. And uh, here's mine and uh, it's very consistent with using it as a desk all the time. And if you type on a laptop, that bracelet is gonna rub against the lower left edge of your laptop for sure. Having watched the cartoon and reading the mangas growing up in Shanghai and as a big fan of Journey to the West, it being a important Chinese myth and folklore, 
Um, it is such an interesting collab, of course, and uh, so I had to get it, even though it's pretty large and chunky for my wrist. I couldn't be happier with it. Oris is an independent Swiss watch brand, one of the few that's not owned by luxury and watch conglomerates like the Swatch Group, LVMH, or Richemont. The company almost went out of business after Seiko introduced the uh, quartz watch in the 70s and was uh, actually bought under the predecessor to the Swatch Group for uh, about a decade. But then in the early 80s, a group of employees did do a management buyout and became independent again and have been ever since. Um, coincidentally, interestingly for me, in the 2000s, they were sponsors of the Williams F1 team. I actually have a few Williams F1 teams that has the Oris logo on the sleeve way before I got interested in mechanical watches. So I, uh, there's one of my polos. Oris makes some really good watches at very competitive prices compared to their um, other Swiss counterparts. In addition to the Aquas dive watch line, they also have the Big Crown and the Pro Pilot lines that are pretty popular. And their most recent well-known watch is probably the Kermit. Um, and their website has an extensive history section under About. Definitely worth the read if you'd like to know more. And also Teddy Balasar very recently did a video of his visit to the Oris HQ and factory. Super interesting. I'll link it in the description if you want to know more about them. Now going from Swiss watchmaking to Chinese mythology, Sun Wukong or the Monkey King is the main character in Journey to the West, one of the four great Chinese novels written during the Ming Dynasty in the 1500s. It is about a Tang Dynasty monk's venture to India to obtain sacred Buddhist text that was later responsible for the spread of Buddhism across China and East Asia. Sun Wukong is the main character and protector of the monk and is the most powerful character. He knows the 72 transformations and powers, and you can see his uh, magical staff here as well. And he fought a lot of demons on the journey, and also before that, he rebelled against the Jade in Burr in Heaven. So really, really cool story, really, really cool character. As one of the most popular novel and characters in Asia, you've probably seen Sun Wukong and his story in TV shows and animes in the US that took inspirations from the original, like Dragon Ball or characters in Kung Fu Panda or Disney's American Board Chinese or Netflix's The Legend of Monkey, uh, video games as well, like um, Black Myth Wukong and characters in Dota, League of Legends, et cetera, et cetera. Anytime you see a monkey, um, in sort of Asian media, it's probably 9 out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, um, took inspiration from The Monkey King. So thanks for watching and spending the time with me on my one and only dive watch.